See into the true face of things, and you keep step with the great way, thus walking freely, undisturbed. If you want to know why you should bother getting rid of clinging mind, Sang Song provides you with a brief description in this verse of one good reason. The non-clinging mind manifests undisturbed freedom. Letting go of clinging mind, we see into the true face of things, meaning we perceive their true nature. This results in a free and undisturbed life. Undisturbed here means serene, equanimity, centered. I think it appropriate at this point to remind ourselves that Sang Song does not just speak abstractly. As someone suffering from leprosy, as someone who lived through a persecution of Buddhism that resulted in the death of his teacher, Sang Song had personal familiarity with the severe difficulties which life can bring. But just as Hui Ko, in their initial encounter, had showed Sang Song that leprosy did not cause his suffering, but rather an attitude or asana of mind led to his anxiety, just so Sang Song could understand how suffering in general arises from mind. This view comes from the heart of Buddhist insight. The Dhammapada, perhaps the most widely read Buddhist scripture, begins as follows. We are what we think. All that we are arises with our thought. With our thoughts, we make the world. Speak or act with an impure mind, and trouble will follow you as the wheel follows the ox that draws the cart. We are what we think. All that we are, ar all that we are arise with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make the world. Speak or act with a pure mind, and happiness will follow you as your shadow, unshakable. Look how he abused me and beat me, how he threw me down and robbed me. Live with such thoughts and you live in hate. Look how he abused me and beat me, how he threw me down and robbed me. Abandon such thoughts and live in love. In this world, hate never yet dispelled hate. Only love dispels hate. This is the law, ancient and inexhaustible from the Dhammapada Thomas Byron translation. I find it remarkable how one can find this insight recorded in the wisdom literature of many sages from many differing traditions. Consider Socrates. Socrates, then we must do no wrong? Crito, certainly not. Socrates, nor when injured, injure in return, as many imagine, for we must injure no one at all? Crito, clearly not. Socrates, again, Crito, may we do evil? Crito, surely not, Socrates. Socrates says, and what of doing evil in return for evil, which is the morality of many, is that just or not? Crito, not just. Socrates, for doing evil to another is the same as injuring him? Crito, very true. Socrates, then we ought not to retaliate or render evil for evil to anyone, whatever evil we may have suffered from him. From Crito, Java translation. Socrates, then if a man says that justice consists in the repayment of debts, and that good is the debt which a man owes to his friends, and evil the debt which he owes to his enemies, to say this is not wise, for it is not true, if as has been clearly shown, the injuring of another can be in no case just. I agree with you, said Polemarchus, from the Republic, Book 1, Jowett Translation. And also consider Section 2 from the Tao Te Ching. A good walker leaves no tracks. A good speaker makes no slips. A good reckoner needs no tally. A good door needs no lock. Yet no one can open it. Therefore the sage takes care of all people and abandons no one. The sage takes care of all things and abandons nothing. This is called following the light. Tao Te Ching, Fing in English translation. This condition of treating all people with kindness, goodness, arises from the no-boundary understanding of existence. Love names another name for the no-boundary condition, for the apiron of existence. Love names another name for the mind which does not cling. Simply love all people, all of existence, without exception, and you see the true face of things, life after life.